dear student today i am going to discuss about the aliphatic nucleophilic substitution reactions now first of all what is organic chemistry it is a branch of chemistry that deals with the study of organic compounds that you are already aware about its definition now what are the different types of organic reactions addition reaction elimination reaction substitution reaction and rearrangement reaction there are four types of organic reactions first of all look at what is addition reaction what are the addition reactions the addition reaction is what that look at this reaction that double bond changes to single bond that means if you are going to add a reagent on unsaturated system then their degree of saturation increases so double bond changes to single bond that type of reactions are called as addition reactions the second type of reaction is elimination reaction it is exactly opposite of the addition reaction that is if the degree of unsaturation increases that means single bond changes to double bond or double bond changes to triple bond if the degree of unsaturation increases that type of reactions are called elimination reactions now the substitution reaction so in this reaction you can easily see that cl group is replaced by hydroxide look at the product so one group is replaced by the other group that type of reactions are called as a substitution reaction now the last is the rearrangement reaction the last type is fourth type is rearrangement reaction so what is the rearrangement reaction the overall in rearrangement reaction there is a migration of a group from migrating origin to the migrating terminus with the departure of leaving group that results into the change of the skeleton of carbon so carbon skeleton is changed during the rearrangement reaction so you can see here that this tertiary butyl group instead of not tertiary butyl group one of the methyl group migrate to next carbon so there is a overall change in the skeleton of carbon hence that type of reactions are termed as rearrangement reaction now in this chapter we are going to discuss about the substitution reactions so what are the different types of substitution reactions so substitution reaction is what there is a one group is replaced by the another group so whatever the group is coming that group are of two types whether the electrophile is going to come during the reaction course or nucleophile is going to come during the reaction course so du uh, during the reaction course therefore the substitution reactions are of two types electrophilic substitution and nucleophilic substitution again the electrophilic substitution again subdivided into two types whether that electrophilic substitution takes place on the aliphatic carbon or aromatic carbon regarding the aliphatic electrophilic substitution and aromatic electrophilic substitution reaction so among that aliphatic electrophilic substitution reactions are less common rather than aromatic electrophilic substitution reactions are highly common reactions because aromatic ring is electron rich ring and that's why it can readily react with the electrophile on the other hand look at the nucleophilic substitution again they are subdivided into two types uh, whether the reaction is carried on the aromatic carbon or aliphatic carbon with respect to that the terms are aromatic nucleophilic substitution aliphatic nucleophilic substitution so in this chapter we are going to talk about the aliphatic nucleophilic substitution reaction and under this heading the three types we are going to discuss sn1 reaction sn2 reaction and sni reaction so all these types of reactions are uh, that the uh, reactions we are going to carry out on sp3 carbon atom so again if the reaction we are going to carry out on sp3 carbon atom then it is termed as sn1 sn2 sni if the reaction is carried out on unsaturated carbon that is sp2 carbon then that type of reactions are 
termed as SN1 dash reaction, SN2 dash reaction, and SNI dash reaction. So today, in this video, I'm going to talk about the aliphatic nucleophilic substitution reaction. And with respect to that, now let us we discuss one by one the different terms. So first term, what is electrophile? So electrophile is what? It is the electron loving species. So electron loving species means electrophiles itself, they are electron deficient. That's why their affinity is towards the electron rich species. Hence the electrophiles in simple term, electrophiles are what? That the molecules are ions that can accept an electron pair. So electrophiles which accept the electron pair, that is called as a electron deficient or electron loving species. Again, the electrophiles are of two types, strong electrophile and weak electrophile. What is strong electrophile? Strong electrophile means having a positive charge. Example of this is a carbocation. What is weak electrophile? Having a partial positive charge. Example, carbonyl carbon. So carbonyl carbon, as it is near to oxygen atom, so carbon which is attached to the oxygen atom, there is a development of partial positive charge. So we call it is a weak electrophile. And the, when there is a complete positive charge, like in carbocation, so that type of electrophiles are termed as strong electrophile. Now the next term, nucleophiles. What is nucleophile? So nucleophile is a region that six positive center. That means it react with the positive center. So again, the word nucleophile comes from nucleus, the positive part of an atom, plus file from Greek word philos, meaning to love. That is a affinity towards the nucleus. And as in nucleus, there is a positively charged, uh, nucleus is a positively charged center. Therefore, nucleophiles are what? Electron rich center, which is having the affinity towards the nucleus. So this is the positive center. Now you can see here, this one is a partial positive center. So this partial positive center, we can call it is a weak electrophile, while this X minus, that its partial minus sign is there. So this is why the polarization takes place. This polarization takes place because of the electronegative nature of X. So nucleophile, is any negative ion or any neutral molecule that at least one, have one unshared electron pair. So nucleophile means what? There has to be an unshared pair of electrons or negative charge. So here the nucleophile is hydroxide, so having a negative charge, therefore this we call it is a strong nucleophile. So this is the one, either it can have a negative charge. And in the second example, you can see water molecule is also act as a nucleophile. The reason is there is presence of two pairs of unshared electron. So this can also act as a nucleophile. So overall, what is nucleophile? Nucleophile is an electron rich species. Either that electron rich is in terms of a negative electron pair or unshared electron pair. Now, on the basis of this, the nucleophiles are subdivided into, again, two types, strong nucleophile and weak nucleophile. Strong nucleophile means having a negative charge. Example, simple example is Grignard reagent or MgX. What is weak nucleophile? Weak nucleophile are those nucleophile, they're having a lone pair of electrons. Example is alcohol, their oxygen having one shared pair of electron. Now, in case of Grignard reagent, R carry minus sign. So R minus is a strong nucleophile. The another example of strong nucleophile is simple hydroxide that is OH minus. Another example is NH2 minus. So these are the different examples of strong nucleophiles. Strong nucleophiles means there has to be a naked pair of, pair of electrons. Weak nucleophile means there has to be an unshared pair of electrons. 
Now, what is nucleophilicity? So, nucleophilicity is what? Nucleophilicity means the tendency of a nucleo, uh, it's a capacity of a nucleophile, how it readily donates its electron density. So, nucleophile, the tensin, tendency of a nucleophile, how readily it donates its electron density. So, nucleophilicity means the major major of a uh, major affinity of a Lewis space for a carbon atom in the SN2 reaction. And what is basicity? Basicity and nucleophilicity, that definition wise, nucleophile and base, base, basic nature, they are somewhat same because base is what? Again, base means that having a lone pair of electron and base is a species that donate a lone pair of electrons. So the definition wise, nucleophile is also same that donate the lone pair of electron. But to whom? That is the question. As the nucleophile donate its electron pair to carbon, while the base donate its electron pair to a proton. So with respect to that, the terms which we have to use, the different terms is nucleophile and base. So nucleophile and bases, they are somewhat same because both donate electron pair, but to whom it has to donate electron pair? If it donate electron pair to carbon atom, then it is nucleophile. If it donate electron pair to a proton, then it is a base. Now nucleophile, methoxy, hydroxy, this is a acetate, and the last one is water molecule. That is the correlation between the basicity and nucleophilicity. So, which are the nucleophiles? So, you can see rate of SN2 reaction with, C, uh, with CH3Br. As you know, what is the pK? pK goes on decreasing. That means acidity go on increasing. So, or rather than the basicity increases as the pK also increases. So, methoxy is a strong base. At the same time, you can see here that methoxy act as a, what is the rate of reaction? It's 25. So it, this can also act as a nucleophile. Now, the hydroxy ion and the comparison between the cyanide and the hydroxide, the cyanide is a stronger nucleophile than the hydroxide. The reason behind is the hydroxide donate its electron density to a proton while cyanide donate its electron density to a carbon. Now, what are the trends in nucleophilicity? So, the, as now we discuss, nucleophilicity is the ability of nucleophile to donate an electron pair to electrophile. So, what are the different trends we observe in nucleophilicity? So, first trend, nucleophilicity decreases with decreasing basicity of the nucleophile. So ju just we go on decreasing the basicity, the nucleophilicity also go on decreasing. So in this example, alkoxy, hydroxy, phenoxy, then uh, carboxylate group, alcohol, water molecule, and this is the sulfonate group. Now, look at here, the nucleophilicity go on decreasing. The reason behind is, look at here, in each and every uh, donor, uh, donor molecule, the donor atom is oxygen only. The nucleophilicity decreases. Why the nucleophilicity decreases? The how it readily donates the electron density. If electron withdrawing groups are present near the oxygen donor atom, then it withdraws the electron density towards itself. So nucleophilicity depends on what? Nucleophilicity depends on two factors. If there, if there is a presence of electron donating group and presence of uh, electron withdrawing group. If the electron donating group is present, then look at the R group. R group is electron donating group. So it transfer its electron density by uh, plus I effect, electron donating inductive effect towards this oxygen. Because of that, what happens? The oxygen having more electron density. If this oxygen having more electron density, then it readily donates its electron density. That's why this is a strong nucleophile. But such type of plus I effect is absent here. Hydrogen not showing a plus I effect. 
therefore compared to alkoxy hydroxy is a less donor act now in case of phenoxy that vinyl ring shows which type of effect vinyl ring shows electron withdrawing resonance effect because of this whatever the electron density is there with this oxygen they delocalize in the benzene ring because of that electron density not readily available for donation hence the nucleophilicity still get decreased now here the in case of electron withdrawing resonance effect the carbon carry the negative charge but if you talk about the carboxylate group then the negative sign which is present on oxygen get delocalized by this carbonyl group and due to that that oxygen carry that negative charge because of that carbon carry negative charge here oxygen carry negative charge so this resonance effect is more powerful as compared to this resonance effect because less electronegative atom never carry a negative charge while more electronegative atom very well carry the negative charge so all these are oxygen having a negative charge so compare with this alcohol and water molecule there is no negative charge so we call this nucleophiles are weak nucleophile because there is absence of negative charge but there is a presence of unshared pair of electrons so as compared to this these all are strong nucleophile the reason behind is they are having unshared a pair of electron but if you look at this one then now there are two oxygen atom which stabilize the negative charge therefore in this case though there is a negative charge present but this sulfonyl group as double bond o here double bond o here the two oxygen atoms are there we stabilize the negative charge on oxygen because of that of electron pair not yet readily available for donation so here though negative charge is present but still it is weak nucleophile as compared to water alcohol and remaining all so this is the first nucleophilicity decreases with decreasing basicity now the second point is less basic but sterically unhindered nucleophiles have higher nucleophilicity than strongly basic but sterically hindered nucleophiles so here look at this is both these are the secondary amines this one is a diethylamine this one is diisopropylamine in this case now this one is diethyl amine is a good donor as compared to this the reason behind it as the steric crowding increases this one is more crowded structure if the crowding increases then nitrogen not having a tendency to donate its electron pair readily the reason behind it that this bulky groups forms a cage around this electron pair so no doubt if you increase the more alkyl group automatically plus i effect increases more is the electron density on nitrogen but still nitrogen not having the ability to donate the electron density that's why as the donating capacity get decrease therefore its nucleophilicity also get decrease same you can see here pyridine is strong base as compared to the substituted pyridine so here also the same reason that bulky groups causing a non bond steric interaction because of this the electron pair not readily donated now the third factor what is the nucleophil the nucleophilicity of a nucleophilic center increases by attached hetero atom that possesses free, free electron pairs so if i compare between the hydroxide and water molecule just now i say that is the if the naked pair of electrons are there then it is always a good donor as compared to unshared pair of electron so hydroxide is a good nucleophile as compared to water molecule same is here that nh2 minus that is amide is a strong donor as compared to ammonia same over here so all this you can see the example acetate is a good donor because of this there is a presence of naked pair of electron while in acetic acid no naked pair of electron 
Phenoxide is a good donor because of presence of lone, uh, lo uh, along with the lone pair of electron, there is a presence of naked pair of electron. So phenoxide is a good donor as compared to phenol. So nucleophilicity of the nucleophile center increases when there is a presence of free electron pairs. The fourth point, nucleophilicity decreases with increasing electronegativity of the attacking atom. So electronegativity go on increasing automatically its tendency to donate the electron pair, that tendency also go on decreasing. Fluorine is the highest, uh, fluorine is the highly electronegative atom among the periodic table, its electronegativity value is four. Oxygen electronegativity value is 3.5, nitrogen is three and carbon is 2.5. So the order of electronegativity go on increasing from carbon to nitrogen to oxygen to fluorine. So this is, we find across the period of the periodic table from left to right, electronegativity go on increasing. So what is electronegativity? Electronegativity is the tendency of an atom to retain the electron pair. So the electronegativity definition and nucleophilicity definition, they are exactly opposite. Nucleophilicity is what? It, how readily donated electron density. What is electronegativity? How it retains with the electron pair. So these two terms are exactly opposite. So as the electronegativity is less for carbon, therefore it is a good donor. While electronegativity of nitrogen is less as compared to oxygen. So as compared to oxygen, nitrogen is a good donor. So same is here, as there is a naked pair of electrons, so that is the trend we can observe in case of the methyl minus NH2 minus. But instead of that, if you have a neutral molecule, then ammonia, water, and HF, still the same trend we can observe, that is as the electronegativity go on increasing, its nucleophilicity also go on decreasing. Same is here that sulfur is Sulfur is sulfur and oxygen. Sulfur is less electronegative than oxygen. So this is across the group of a periodic table. So if you go down the column, then from once you go outward, uh, once you go going in a downward direction across the periodic uh, down during a uh, in a periodic table, if you are going down in a column, the electronegativity go on decreasing from top to bottom electronegativity go on decreasing so sulfur is less electronegative than oxygen if it is less electronegative then its tendency to donate electron pair is more as compared to oxygen look at the seventh group element that is fluoro chloro bromo iodo so from top to bottom electronegativity decreases so naturally iodo is more good donor or it is a strong nucleophile as compared to bromo, as compared to chloro, as compared to fluoro. The last point is nucleophilicity of the nucleophilic center increases due to the att attachment of hydrogen atom that possesses a free electron pair. So this is a peroxy anion and this one is a hydroxy anion. If you increase one of the oxygen atom, then automatically its tendency of donation increases. So peroxy anion is a good donor as compared to hydroxy. Same is here that hydrazine and ammonia, if you increase one more heteroatom, automatically its tendency of donation electron pair increases as compared to the ammonia. So hydrazine is a strong base as compared to ammonia. The next one is the leaving group. So what is leaving group? When the nucleophile attack the reaction center, then the leaving group is going to be part. So what are the, how we can say that what type of leaving group we need? So what type of leaving group we need? We need a good leaving group. So good leaving group is what? The leaving group departs with the electron pair. So when the leaving group depart, it depart with the electron pair. So leaving group with the electron pair and that electron pair can be donated back and it can react with the reaction center and that reaction can be in a reverse direction. 
So because of that, whatever the negative charge is generated on the living roof, that negative charge has to be stabilized very well. If that charge is stabilized very well, then then and then only the reaction we can do the reaction in forward direction. So halogens are highly electronegative atoms. So halogens are act as a good living group because halogens tendency is to retain with the electron pair as compared to remaining. Therefore, halogens as they are electronegative atom, therefore they retain with the electron density or they retain with the minus whatever the minus sign is generated after the departure of living group. Therefore, halides are always a good living group. And they are relatively more stable and very weak bases. So look at here, the nucleophile donate its electron density to R so that this living group depart and living group, once it, the living group get departed, there is a development of negative charge on this. The another possibility, now here nucleophile having a negative charge, the another possibility, the nucleophile having an unshared pair of electron. When it donates its unshared pair of electron, then nucleophile, as it donates its electron pair, therefore a positive charge on this nucleophile and living group depart with the electron density. The example of this hydroxide minus sign donate its electron density to methyl, that is a CH3 group. So once it donates its electron density here, the living group depart with the electron density. So this way we can show the mechanism. So living group depart with the minus sign. But ammonia having unshared pair of electron, again that donate its electron density to this methyl group. And because of that, this Br get departed. So once the nitrogen electron pair are donated, then there is a positive charge on nitrogen. Nucleophilic substitution reactions where the substrate bears a formal positive charge. The example of this, when there is a alcohol, methanol, when it is undergoing reaction with the SNIS nucleophile, and already there is a positive charge in the, on the living group. So living group, already there is a positive charge. The example, if you look at here, that uh, protonated, that is alcohol is there and alcohol is undergoing a protonation. And so this living group having a positive charge. So this living group departs after the departure of this living group, we can see there is no charge on this living group. So that is also one thing, either the living group, in previous example, we discussed that living group, once the living group depart, there is a negative charge. And such type of living group also we have that already there is a positive charge in the substrate itself. And after departure, the charge is neutralized. So such type of living groups are called as a neutral living group. As there is no charge, therefore that type of living groups are called as a neutral living group. Now this is the relative reactivity of the some living group. So this one is a tosylate group, then ido, bromo, chloro, fluoro, and you can see fluoro is a bad living group as compared to the remaining. So the best living group is tosylate. Why the tosylate is a best living group? So this is the tosylate structure. So tosylate. So here what happened in this tosylate structure, the negative charge is generated that can be stabilized by way of a electron withdrawing resonance effect. So either it can stabilize by this oxygen atom or it can stabilize by this oxygen atom. So this negative charge which is present on this oxygen can be stabilized by this oxygen as well as this oxygen. So this electron pair not readily available for the donation. So tosylate is one of the good living group. The another best living group is the triplet. So triflate is what? That CF3 group is trifluoromethyl group. This trifluoromethyl group exhibit a strong minus I effect. Because of that, no doubt this O minus stabilized the same here that O minus can be stabilized by way of a 
electron withdrawing resonance effect as well as one more factor is there that is CF3 group chose minus I effect. Because of this minus I effect and minus R effect, the electron density which is generated after the departure of living group on oxygen that is not readily available for donation. So, triflet, oscillate, they never act as a donor, they never act as a nucleophile, rather than they are the good living groups. So, like, look at here, the resonance is shown over here for the triflet, that how it stabilizes the negative charge by resonance effect. At the same time, this shows the minus I effect. So these two factors are responsible for the stability of living group. So for the stability of living group, the major, which factors are responsible? The electron withdrawing inductive effect or electron withdrawing resonance effect favors a good living group. But is on the other hand, if I talk about the nucleophile, so for the nucleophile, what type of groups we need? We need electron donating groups in, the in terms of electron donating resonance effect or electron donating inductive effect. Then, uh, then its nucleophilic nature increases. If you change it into a withdrawing, then its nature towards the living group increases. The next important is strongly basic ions rarely act as a living group. So what is the meaning of this? So X minus, X minus it attack on this ROH that is alcohol and hydroxide is act as a living group. So this living group, what is the statement here? Strongly basic ions. So as you know, hydroxide is a strong basic. So it, it never acts as a good living group. So this is a bad living group. Strong basic groups are bad living group. The reason is this charge is, which are the good bases? Good bases means that readily donate its electron pair. And if the hydroxide is going to readily donate its electron pair, then it not act as a living group. Rather than what? It act as a either nucleophile or it act as a base. As you know, hydroxide are good bases as compared to the nucleophile because base donate its electron pair to a proton while nucleophile donate its electron pair to carbon. So that the another example is again the nucleophile donate its electron density and hydrogen which is removed as hydride. So hydride is again a bad living group same this nucleophile donate its electron density and methyl group is getting departed. So methyl minus. So both these living groups are bad living group. They are not the good living group. The reason is same there. Its basic nature is more as compared to living group. So then another possibility is what? Due to the protonation of alcohol, now you can see that this living group having a charge that is a positive charge. So after departure of living group, there is no charge on this water molecule. So this is a good living group. So good living group are always, which living group? That is, uh, if the living group, there, if there is no charge on this living group, then that will be a, we call it is a neutral living group or that is a good living group. So these are the different living groups that are the good living group. The first example is the missile group. So in short, it is written as MS. So what is this? That is a, uh, here methyl group is there. That is a methyl group. So alkyl methylate. So this part is here. R group is attached to this. So nucleophile attack on this R group and then this bond that is between uh, R and oxygen is going to disconnect. That is a, this entire group, we call it is a mesylate. Mesylate is a good living group. The reason is same, this two oxygen shows electron withdrawing resonance effect. Therefore, the oxygen, whatever the electron density generated on this oxygen, that is very well stabilized by electron withdrawing resonance effect. This one is the tocyl group. And when it is attached to the alkyl group, that is a, then this entire living group is called as a 
tosylate group. So this entire group is called as a tosylate group. So tosylate is also one of the best living group. So living groups are of two, the three types, neutral living group, good living group, and bad living group. So what are the neutral living group? Having a positive charge initially, after departure, there is no charge. So example is this protonated water. So what is the good living group? Having a partial positive charge, after departure, there is a development of negative charge, but that charge is stabilized by minus R, minus M, or strong minus I effect. Example is to silent. Bad living group, again, there is a partial positive charge before departure, after departure, development of negative charge, but that charge not stabilized by minus R minus M or strong minus I effect. So example of this, F minus, this is a bad living group. Now next is the, what we require during the substitution reaction is the solvent. So the role of the solvent is to provide the homogeneous media for the reaction. So there are two types of solvent, polar solvent and non-polar solvent. The polar solvent is what? There is a presence of a heteroatom, development of a polar bond. Because of the presence of heteroatom, the bond is polarized. So that type of solvents, we call it is a polar solvent. Non-polar solvent, there is absence of a heteroatom. So heteroatom, it might be oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur. So these are the non-polar solvent when there is absence of heteroatom. Now polar solvents again subdivided into two types, polar protic solvent and polar aprotic solvent. So what is polar protic solvent? In polar protic solvent, if the hydrogen is attached to highly electronegative atom, like in this case, it is attached to oxygen atom. If the hydrogen is attached to the highly electronegative atom, then that is called as a polar protic solvent. If the hydrogen is not attached to the highly electronegative atom, then that type of solvents are called as a polar or protic solvent. So in case of acetone, that proton is attached to carbon and it is not attached to the oxygen. So oxygen is more electronegative atom as compared to the carbon. Therefore, acetone is an example of a polar or protic solvent. And why it is a polar solvent? Because of presence of a heteroatom. The example of non-polar solvent is hexane. In case of hexane, there is only carbon hydrogen atoms are there. There is no heteroatom. Therefore, it is a non-polar solvent. So these are the some examples of protic solvent, that is polar protic solvent, acetic acid, the hydrogen is attached to the electronegative oxygen atom, tertiary butyl alcohol. Again, hydrogen is attached to the oxygen atom, ethanol, methanol, formic acid, water. In all these cases, the hydrogen is attached to the highly electronegative atom. That's why we call it is a polar protic solvent. In case of a, a protic solvent, that is hydrogen is not uh, hydrogen is not attached to the uh, electronegative atom. Now, in this case, the diethyl ether, the hydrogen is attached to carbon, it is not attached to oxygen. Same in chloroform, hydrogen is attached to a carbon, not, in, uh, not to the chloroatom. So, in, in all these examples, that if the proton, if it is not attached to the electronegative atom, then all these solvents are called as a aprotic solvent or non-hydroxylic solvent. So we call this is a polar aprotic solvent. So for this, you refer the books.